In this video, we're going to be looking at how these dials, these elements of the watch, were created inside of Flame. The blue and white hour dials. And obviously, while some of the modeling techniques are going to be repetitious to what we've already learned, we'll jump past some of that and just focus on the areas of these dials and how they were created that is different than what we've already learned. But as usual, we'll start with an action node. So drag the action node into your schematic and let's go look at the end result of the action node. We'll take advantage of the grid again to use while we draw the profile of the dials. So go to the grid settings in action. Under grid, choose row and column grid. And then under center, enable the large center option. Enter 32 for the column and 18 for the row. Disable the grid option. Let's go to our schematic view and in our node bin, hit the three key and drag a 3D shape into the schematic. Hit F4 to go back to our end result. And let's zoom in to see our grid to use that as our guide. And now I'm just gonna come in the draw shape tool is active and we're going to draw the profile of the dial that we're creating and for reference i have auto tangent on right now that's why when i just click we still get a curved shape holding the control key click in region select all the control points then hit the b key to get our break tool and click on one of the control points so now I'm going to zoom in and we're going to go along and just fine tune each one of the control points using the grid as our guide to make sure our shape is exactly how we want it. And again, if we go down to the GMAS vertices settings, you'll see that auto tangent is enabled. Hit the A key. Now we have the add points active, our tool. And I'll click right here in the center, as I said, of this diagonal line. Then hit the M key to go back to our select tool. And we'll come up and I'll just grab that vertice and I'll just slowly drag it down. You can see that it has the tangent handles because of the option of auto tangent being on. And we've got a nice curved shape. Now we want to round off our corner. So let's zoom into the front corner first. Like I said, we want to put a curve here instead of this straight point. So hit the A key, which is going to take us to our add points once again. And I'm going to add a control point on both sides of this control point. And then I'll come and adjust the tangent handles so they're very tight as of right now. And then we want to delete the one in the corner. So hit the D key to get your delete tool and just click on that control point. Hit the M key to return back to our select tool. And then with the select tool, we can adjust the vertices, adjust the tangent handles to create a really nice, clean, smooth curve. And now we want to do the exact same thing to this corner up here. So hit the A key, add the control points, get the D key, delete the one in the center, and then adjust the tangents with your select tool once again. Let's zoom back. As before, let's go and turn on our shading from our node preferences. Go back to the schematic. Let's select the top axis for our shape get rid of our node preferences, and let's just rotate this a little bit so we can see the extrusion happen as we do it. Go back and select our 3D shape, go to the basic parameters for our 3D shape, and let's extrude this. I'll set it to 50. So you can see we have a nice rounded curve in the top and the front of this. This is great, but now we want to go and adjust our bevel a little bit. We want to have a round edge, not this sharp edge along the front and the back of our dial. So we go back to our profile settings for the geometry. So now I'm just going to adjust the angle, the position, and the curvature to achieve the edge that we want. The curvature will end up being at the max of one. So I'll leave the angle at somewhere around 5.2. The position is at 0.80. And as I said, curvature is at one. I think this looks pretty good. So now we need 12 of these for one for each hour. So we're going to use our replica tool to do that. Back in our schematic, go down to our node bin. Let's drag a replica node into the schematic for action and then connect the replica to the top axis for our 3D shape. 
let's go back to our result view. Let's go to the object parameters with the replica selected and let's enter 12 into the number. Now there's 12 copies obviously, but they're all directly in the same position. They're all on top of each other. I'll click in the Y rotation field and I'll enter 360 divided by 12, which is going to be 30. Now we have 12 dials with a 30 degree difference. Go back to the action schematic and select our axis that's on top of our 3D shape and return to our end result view. And then we're gonna change our X position, which is going to move them away from the center and spread them out. I'll drag it close to 800. Right now I got it at like 792. And then to see exactly what we're doing, let's go back to the schematic one more time. Let's go and add an axis above our replica node. Then we can scale this down a little bit and also rotate it so we can see exactly what we're doing. All right, it's time to start adding some materials to our geometry, our dials. This is a good point where we're going to jump forward here because it's going to get very repetitious. We're going to be using a substance PBR. We're going to be using an IBL light in the scene for our, with our camera. So let's jump forward to where we've already added the substance texture to this. We've already added the IBL and let's move on from here. And I currently have the substance PBR selected and we are at the advanced setting and I just want to change the color, the aluminum color. So I'll click on the swatch and I'll change it to a light blue. We can hit F4 now, and now we see the aluminum color is blue. Let's go back to the color swatch for our aluminum color, and let's tweak it a little bit. Let's drag it to be even a deeper blue than this blue. Just like some of the other substance PBRs we looked at, you've got your scratches, your dirt, different options you can adjust and change to create the specific aluminum look you want. As you start to rotate your geometry, you can see how the material is affected by the light. Let's go back to the end result to talk about what we're going to do next. The next part we're going to work on is creating the front white piece and the top white piece. So go back into your action node and at the schematic level, we want to select the axis that is below the replica node, which is actually our geometry. And once all of that is selected, hit control D to duplicate that. And then holding the Alt key or Option key, just select that axis and let's move these over to this side of our schematic. And then connect the replica node to the axis that we just duplicated. And then make sure we have this new axis selected from the duplicate we just created. Then by adjusting our X value, we are going to reposition our new duplicated geometry to be more toward the center. I've got my X position around 375. Now we're gonna go and delete some of the vertices from this duplicated geometry to model this front part. Zoom in close to make sure you can see what you're doing. So hit the D key to get our delete tool. So with the mask selected, and we zoom in to make sure we see what we're doing, we wanna start deleting some of the vertices. We don't wanna have this big curve. Pan over, we definitely wanna delete the one that's in the middle, creating the big curve. Looks like we're missing one or two here. Let me zoom in even more. I can delete this one. And then I can region select this one here and then delete that one also. I'll zoom out now to see our new shape. And then I can region select this last vertice that's up here, this top one, and then down in parameters. And I'll just decrease the Y translate control to change the shape of this. Then I'll region select the vertices at the front of the shape. And then I'll adjust the X translate for these vertices to make it closer to the original shape and a much smaller 3D object. Then I can region select the ones in the back and start to adjust that. And again, I'll just region select just the top vertices in the front and I'll bring that down. And now we want to change the color of the shape. We want it to be white. So go back into the schematic. We'll select the substance PBR number two, the one under our material node. And I'll just click on the aluminum color swatch and switch this to be white. Now we've got a white accent piece that's part of our dials in the front of them. And now we can go along and tweak the shape of either our original geometry or the new geometry to create the dial that we want. And now we want to copy this white aluminum geometry that we just created in the front to create another accent piece that will go on the top of the dials. So Let's go back to our schematic view. Again, make sure we select the axis that is above our 3D shape and everything underneath it. 
hit Control D once again to duplicate this. And then I'm just gonna move this over to the side of our schematic. And then again, we're gonna connect our replica node to this new geometry we just created. So now we have a third geometry. Let's go back to our end result view. And with that new axis selected from our geometry, we're gonna to start to change the position, the X and the Y. Just make some adjustments, as I said, with your X and Y to get it positioned to be on the top of our dial. We've got it lined up pretty good here. Let's zoom in on this. And then select the G mask for one of these new shapes we just duplicated. And we're gonna to go to the vertices and we're going to adjust them again. I'll region select all the vertices that are part of the top of this G mask. And then once again, from our vertices parameters, we're gonna start making adjustments to the translate to remodel this new shape. Use either the X or the Y translate for these vertices to make it fit along the top of our dial. Now we have the two aluminum white accent pieces on our blue dial. Now to see the end result, we can hit the I key a couple times to turn off our icons. Go back to your grid settings and let's disable our center and our grid. And then we can select our top axis in our schematic view. And back in the result view, we can rotate and see the shapes we just created. Going back to look at our end result, you can see there was a little more tweaking going on. We adjusted some of the, the white accent pieces a little more, but this is the procedure and how this was put together. Okay, that's it for this video.